Uh, good evening, Sunshine Coast, and welcome to another episode of Local Focus. We're up to episode 15, I think we are. And uh, I'm your host, Darren from Digital Brewster, where I serve up freshly brewed content strategies, tips and tricks to help small business owners and entrepreneurs get started with live streaming. And we've got a busy week uh, this week for Local Focus. I've got every night this week except for Friday. And uh, this is a special birthday edition because it's my birthday today. So uh, happy birthday, me. Uh, the big 5-0, so, uh, which I, I was saying to uh, a mate earlier, I think 50 is the new 30, so uh, we'll go with that, I think. Uh, but we've got a special guest in the studio uh, this evening, uh, Jay from Broken Arrow Archery. It's, like I said in the description, archery is one of those things that probably 95% of us have experienced as a kid uh, at some point at school camp or at school or something like that. And then it probably just takes a little bit of a back seat for a lot of people. But uh, we're here to have a chat with uh, Jay tonight about your indoor archery range. Yes. And that's located tell, at tell Nambour. Little, okay, yeah. we're in Curry Street in Nambour, just straight across the road from McDonald's. So easy to see if you know where McDonald's are, just straight across the road. Yeah. So we've got a, like an archery shop where we, where we sell the archery equipment. We also have six archery shooting lanes, which are 18 metres long. So a standard indoor international range yeah. and with those that range being there we have a whole range of higher equipment so we can teach people archery if, you, if you're keen on archery you shot it when you were younger like we all have <laughs> um, you can come into the shop book, book a session and we'll get you out on lane run you through some safety rules that sort of thing and then you know choose a bow that suits your, you know, your size and strength and all that sort of thing yeah. and get you out on the range show you how to stand and shoot and you know, get the form right start you off close start shooting away and you but most people like do an hour session and and by the end of the hour they're shooting the full distance at 18 meters oh, and cool. keeping all their arrows on, on on the targets that we give them well so. I, I i couldn't guarantee that i'd be doing that but i guess with some ex <laughs> excellent tutorage it's uh, it's one of those things it's yeah. just having the right instruction isn't yeah it? that's right yeah and yeah like i said most people we get people come in of all age groups so you know especially like love seeing the kids come in mm. i've got two daughters myself that are forever on t on you know playing the old <laughs> games and things like that that's good to see kids coming in and doing an activity yeah that they wouldn't you know normally have available to them so yeah definitely I love it. Yeah. and archery is one of those sports that's been around for oh i think i was doing a little bit of research sort of dating back to like ancient egypt times yeah yeah i think yeah. they've sort of found you know arrowheads and stuff yes yeah before that but yes. that's a long time in the game long isn't time, it, yeah. archery. yeah uh, my, my business partner rich always tells people that archery is the way people used to shop yeah, <laughs> that was the go right. out there, and so it's kind of ingrained in our, you know, in our DNA. Yeah, uh, most people, you know, they, when they pick up a bow and start shooting, it feels natural. You know, it's even though you're not hitting what you're, what you're aiming for, <laughs> but it doesn't take long. So yeah, it's sort of how we used to go and get our food, basically. So yeah, um, and then and then it became a weapon beyond that, like um, you know, so like those yeah. middle ages and yes, the yeah. Chinese, I guess were fairly big with the old archery. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then beyond that, I think I read that the first, um, documented competition started in jolly old England around about 1500, yeah. 1600 or something, something like that. So like that. from a competitive standpoint, yeah. it's been around for a, a long, long time. Yeah. And yeah. I guess that, that era that you're just talking about 1500s relates to that Robin Hood, Robin Hood time. Or yep. watch Robin Hood movies where there's an archery tournament, <laughs> he comes along and splits an arrow. Yeah. That sort of thing. So it's just around that sort of era, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and well, that's something what we all grew up as kids. Yeah, Robin Hood was a big thing. That's and it. And why we all went out in the backyard and got a stick and a bit of string and we did. started I, shooting away. Yeah, as I think uh, the, it's part of every, every kid's sort of childhood sort of uh, um, education. Well, probably more so let's say the older generations yeah, yeah but yeah. um yeah i always remember grabbing a nice sort of you know a green you sort of go for that sort of slightly green sort of stick yeah, and then get a bit stick. of twine and away <laughs> see how you go yeah but uh yeah so i think a lot of people would have fond memories of archery as kids yes yeah. uh, particularly in our age group now um but you did say like archery is not something that is just restricted to older people or it's uh it, yeah. it covers the full range yes yeah we well we at our range we we have a, a minimum age of seven years old yeah we're just fine we occasionally we'll let younger ones slip through if their family's playing the game but 
Seven years old tends to be the age where you start to get a bit of concentration and focus happening, yep. and to be able to, you know, physically do that for an hour, uh, anyone younger than that, really going to struggle. Yeah. So seven's our youngest, and we've had archers up to you know in their nineties coming in and shooting yeah, regularly. Goodness. So, and um, as well as able-bodied and disabled-bodied. Yes, bodied. yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, we've got yeah. Uh, quite a few wheelchair archers that come in. Yeah. Um, you know, people with their carers, um, you know, mentally disabled. It's a, it's a great, even kids with like ADHD and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's a great tool for to making focus and concentration. So we, we get oh, quite a lot of younger kids, yeah. uh, which are on the spectrum and all that sort of stuff, yeah. that they come in either with a care or their parent and... They start doing archery, they get excited about it and they'll keep coming back. But they, you know, I've watched, there's a, a young boy that's been coming into the shop for about probably two years and he he was completely, couldn't focus, all that sort of stuff. And now it's, it's amazing to see, he comes in, he associates with the other kids in the group. They yep. have a great time. Yeah. Now, whereas he'd be quiet and shy normally. Just getting out there and being amongst like-minded kids, I guess, and and yeah. now he's quite a good shooter now. So <laughs> he's like, and that happens all the time. It's so good to see, you know, the kids getting excited about it. Like yeah. I said. Um, well, I, I think that that's probably half the thrill, and it's kind of like golf. Not that I'm a very good golfer, but <laughs> yeah. just that feeling of when you hit that ball and it just it goes, goes straight, straight up the middle. Yeah, yeah. I guess it'd be a similar sort of experience when it comes to archery. Yeah. And if you getting close, you're getting to that bullseye. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were talking before uh, before we went live about um the old uh, robin hood yeah uh, what do you what'd you call it oh we call it robin hood if you yep. shoot an, another arrow, arrow on the back of, an of another arrow. arrow it's not necessarily an uncommon thing to no happen. no we get like i said we've got people coming through the shop all the time shooting and, and about twice a month someone will robin <laughs> Put an arrow <laughs> so it's great i would never have uh, guessed that to be yeah, honest. yeah yeah it's it's um oh, i guess it's just mathematics and eventually one arrow is going to hit the back of another one but once you become proficient at it yeah what happens is you you because arrows can be expensive yep. you start shooting not all your arrows at one target so we'll, a lot of indoor faces are three faces and you'll shoot one arrow into each yep. just so you avoid the damage i guess yeah that's it yeah, there was one one instance when rich and i bought into the shop which was about three and a half years ago uh, a gentleman came over from the railway station over the road and i and heard about me i've got a long history in archery and competed for australia and all that mm. he heard about me and said oh like how good are you and show us you know so i got my bow and i shot one shot into the middle of the target and the very next shot robin hooked with an arrow and i went <laughs> put my bow away and said yeah is that good enough well that, that's the time to put it away <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right fluke of course but yeah <laughs> yeah and uh so if people want to uh come in they don't obviously don't need to have their own equipment no, that's something you no, supply no we have all that there so uh we have a range everybody that comes in will generally start off with what we call a rico bow a traditional style bow which is basically a stick and a string yeah you know, like we all remember um because the, the form's the same the techniques are the same whether you're using that bow or a compound bow you know with all the wheels and cables mm -hmm. and things so um, we'll teach people the safety rules all that sort of thing and then how to you know, stand and shoot and do, you know hit the target um and then if they're interested in a compound bow you know after sort of half an hour we'll go right yeah we'll get into the more technological side of it <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah. uh compound bow uh you know cams and wheels that that help to give the, the arrow more speed and acceleration so they're more yeah. powerful a little harder to draw and draw and shoot and you know things like uh you know release aids so that tool that you trigger the shot with rather than yeah. just shooting off your fingers so it makes it the arrow more accurate yeah so and the old also, guard oh, oh the arm guard first thing that goes on to people <laughs> is an arm guard yeah so there's the uh yeah whenever you draw a bow and shoot it let's drink and slap your arm you know, yeah yeah but uh, once we teach you the correct form you'll avoid doing that i don't shoot <laughs> with an arm guard i haven't for a long time but when that string hits you yeah you, you can know get a nasty it, bruise yeah. yeah and uh something i didn't really know is that y you never release a bow without an arrow yeah as that's well. right yeah, yeah so we call that a dry fire okay so any bow a recurve or a compound or sort of thing is when you when you draw it back with an arrow and you're, you're creating energy you're letting that energy go most of that energy goes into the, into arrow. the arrow so yeah. say you know 70 percent of the arrow of the energy is used to force the arrow forward and then 30 percent left over is just to vibrate through the bow yep. if there's no arrow all that energy has to go somewhere and it'll just 100 percent through the bow with a recurve bow oh, it can you know, the 
all that energy going forward, the limbs can like over bend forward and can yeah. crack and break. Yeah. Um, not so much with a recurve, but a compound bow, big no no. You let it go, the string's going to like jump off the rails. They can <laughs> bend cams, they can break limbs, they fall to pieces basically, and they're very dangerous. Yeah. So, yeah, must, so we don't. If you ever pull a bow back, make sure it's got an arrow in, and that's one yeah. of the first things we tell people too. Don't don't ever draw a bow yeah. back unless there's an arrow in it, and don't ever. If it's got an arrow in it, make sure it's pointed down <laughs> towards the target. So. Yeah, and I, I guess that's one of those things. It is one of those sports that is a very high sort of safety uh, requirement for oh, that. Yes. So you've got you know plenty of um, instruction and staff and yeah, uh, yeah. So we, yeah, we've got seen yeah. rules that we teach everybody, and uh, you know when you get you know a big group of like family and three four kids, some of them the kids are daydreaming. And it's like you got to listen. Tell the parents they got to mm. listen. This is very important for safety yeah and the same thing when 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 everybody shoots we've got a shooting line everybody shoots at the same time mm -hmm. down the equipment so nobody's got a bow in their hand when anyone's walking forward to the line collect the arrows yeah come back wait till everyone's back safely pick up the bows and go again it's the same on any range yeah. around the world really it's and, and we don't hear a lot about archery generally speaking we were talking about this before as well but we don't generally tend to sort of see a lot of it other than I guess, uh, you know, something, you know, one of our uh, Australian archers does something pretty fantastic worldwide. Yes, but yeah. You, we've got, you were saying you've got a fairly healthy um, community of archers on the Sunshine Coast. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's quite surprising, actually. When when I, when Rich and I bought the shop, you know, three and a half years ago, I come from a background of target archery, so it's kind of where I had my blinkers on of target archery. Indoor archery is part of that. Um, I did a little bit of field archery, but I came into that shop thinking, you know, yeah, this is my target audience, it is target archers, that sort of thing. But there, there's a quite, because there's a you know, field archery club at Chevellum behind mm -hmm. the school there, uh, target archery club at Budrum, then you've got a field archery club at Gympie and another 3D archery club at Caboolture, sort of, yeah. all in this within, you know, less than an hour's drive sort of thing. Um, and a lot of bow hunters, which yeah. is the biggest surprise to me. I honestly thought that bow hunters would be one or two percent of the market, but they're probably thirty percent of my business, really. Yeah, it goodness, surprised yeah. me. Yeah. Um, whether they're um, seasoned bow hunters or whether they want to be bow hunters, whatever. Those yeah. People want to, I don't know, get that feeling of, of hunting for food and all that sort of stuff, which, as I said, it's like in our DNA. It's yeah, you know, it goes back to that. So um but yeah really surprised me so but having said that we, we have oh, i don't know probably 50 regulars every week that mm. are coming every week and then you know whatever 50 100 <laughs> who knows <laughs> coming and trying it out for the first time or the second time that sort of thing and and a lot of it from from that what we do is is introduce people to archery that's what i want to do is i want to grow the sport yeah um we introduce people to archery show them how to do it you know, they get excited about maybe get a passion for it too and then they'll start to buy their own gear and then they'll want to branch out from what we do at the shop which is indoor archery it's all good fun but you know it can get a little boring so people want to either bow hunt or they want to go and do you know field archery 3d archery so yeah. what we do is we, we know a lot of the clubs around and, and are members ourselves so mm -hmm. if somebody's interested in going further we can go well hey come along on the weekend you know there's a 3d shoot at Caboolture. yep we're all going down we'll meet you here and come with us show well, you the ropes and that's yeah. a big thing for people they don't they're a bit scary walking into a, an unknown club of nobody they know and don't know how to do the sport so of thing yeah if someone's going down there with them and holding well, their uh, hand exactly i great. think that's uh you know it's not a lot different to what i'm sort of doing here with small business and and live streaming sort of yeah. sort of holding <laughs> the hand a little bit to say okay well this is what's possible yeah and uh sort of hopefully you know you know those businesses that are sort of coming through they'll start to do a bit more themselves and you know and it's the same sort of principle i guess yeah, yeah. so that's a, that's it's good that you you know it's not just a business it's a passion and it's something that you want to yeah. uh, grow yeah. as a uh, community as yes well. yeah. yeah uh like i said I, i've been doing archery for about 30 years i've been a member of the sunshine coast club for most of those 30 years um that club's a fairly small club i guess members wise i couldn't couldn't as I guess how many members, but I would say less than a hundred members. Mm -hmm. um, the big club at Brisbane at Mount Petrie, 
maybe two, three hundred members, I guess. Yeah. And what they do is they're, they're part of introducing people to archery as a come and try day. So people might go to the club or ring the club and say, hey, I want to try archery. And they'll go, yeah, look, this first Sunday of the month we do a come and try. Book your name in, come down and you know, they'll do what we do, teach them how to do it safely and properly. And they go from there. Then perhaps they join the club and continue on. Mm -hmm. But they're only doing that once a month. We're, we can do it every day at the shop, basically. Yeah, yeah. So that's anytime right. somebody wants to do it, and we and and I speak to some of the people high up in Archery Australia about what I'm doing is bringing, you know, hundred people every week trying the sport out. Mm, mm. Um, whereas look, I, I understand that a club can't do that; there are volunteers running that's it, right. and they only open on weekends, all that sort of stuff. But um, it's something that if they want to advance the sport, you need members doing it. That's yeah, and I, yeah. and, and uh, you know, like you were saying, it it is exciting. Like it's um, and it's achievable for a lot of people as well. So it's not something that's going to take you years and years yeah. and years to master. I mean, yeah. well, yes, it will, but yeah, that's at that high level. Get, yeah, but yeah. people can enjoy archery pretty much like you were saying. Within that hour, they can be shooting at that Just, distance. Yeah, and, especially uh, um, like an adult. You know, I could, you know, say that somebody's not too young and not too old. That's physically capable and able to shoot solidly for an hour with a compound bow with all the you know, sights and aiming devices, you can be grouping your arrows like that within an hour. Yeah. So at 20 metres, yep, which just surprises a lot of people. They're, <laughs> they're really amazed. And so when you're shooting at that level, then you can go to any club, you know, shoot field archery and all that and not embarrass yourself. You're not going to yeah, be yeah. You know, missing and hitting trees and all this sort of <laughs> stuff. So... You know, with an hour's solid tuition and maybe coming back for you know, a couple of hours just to get in the groove of it, you can be competitive at club level. Mm, so, mm. And uh, we're coming up to the point where the pointy end, we'll call it the pointy end, uh, <laughs> of a competition that you're running at the moment yeah, as well. Yeah, okay. So a bit of background. Previously, prior to COVID, every Thursday night we would have a social competition where we'd get 15 to 20 archers coming along every week and we'd you know grade them and everybody'd shoot and after a month we'd have a few prizes and things and then start it and go again um but once COVID hit we couldn't do that there was too many people in the shop at once and too many people close together all that sort of thing so last year we didn't really do any comps until up near december or something we started thought how can we i've had so many of the regular competitions just go <laughs> oh, i want to do something i want to do yeah. something so what we've done is we have uh a period of two months where people can book a lane in an hour and come and shoot a score and they submit their three best their three best scores over a two-month period and then we're having a final shoot off which is coming up on sunday week on the 7th of march mm -hmm. um where there's three grades and they'll shoot at three different time slots during throughout the day and two archers up at a time so we're going to have the top six so in b grade will turn up at midday on mm -hmm. sunday and they'll shoot off from sixth place fifth and the winner of that will play fourth, and the winner of that plays third, so on right through to the final. Then we'll do a break, then A grade, then the open grade. Yeah. Um, and it's great to get being able to get so many like competitive archers to be able to have something to compete in. <laughs> and we've put up a bit of money, and you yeah. know, they, they pay an entry fee that goes in the prize pool. So no, that's good. Uh, it's something a competition that I hope to grow in the future to make it uh, like an internationally recognized competition so yep. there, there's some big competitions throughout the world you know, archery world archery do do their world cup series which they didn't run last year they sort of just started doing online ones mm -hmm. which is what we're doing here <laughs> uh, so people shoot online in, in different venues and they put their scores in shoot off um the las vegas shoot is another big shoot in america which is held in february i went to that last year when mm -hmm. it was just before sort of COVID hit this year they haven't had it, of course, because of all the COVID stuff going on. Um, they're doing a virtual Vegas shoot yeah. <laughs> as well. But I believe that with the lifting of restrictions over there, they are going to have the shoot later this year sometime. Uh, I think it's part of their obligation to the hotel yep. that they, they have to have a competition. Um, so the world of archery has changed competitive-wise. So the competitions around the world, last year nobody could do anything. So... I guess, like everything, you've got to adapt. And that's what we've done is we've done a competition that meets all the COVID restrictions. You know, people are apart, not too many people in the shop at once, all that yep, sort of thing. Yep. So 
it gives people a chance to compete and yeah. newcomers we're, we're running grades b grade a grade and open grade which okay. is the high level archer so a b grade archer is um well we out of a, of a 300 round we'll say 30 shots at 10 points at a time uh they're shooting up to 275 points so that's a that's a level that if i introduce you to archery probably within three or four hours session and a little bit of confidence boosting you'd be <laughs> shooting 250s and 260s right, sort of wow. thing. yeah yeah so uh it's a good introduction for new archers to get up on the line with a bit of nerves <laughs> shooting against somebody else on live on facebook yeah and yeah. uh you know try and beat somebody and win a bit of prize money so yeah, yeah. we've we put up two thousand dollars for the prize money in over three divisions so we got first, second, and third, but the main, the big prize is six hundred cash for the yep. open grade, five hundred for A grade, and four hundred for B grade, oh, and cool. second and third money. But yeah, um, so yeah, I hope to grow this competition eventually to be a ten thousand dollar prize pool. Yeah, so um, and get archers from all over Australia and perhaps even internationally to come and shoot at one or maybe two venues to do well, it. Well, you got to have a plan. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> yeah. Nothing happens without a plan. So yeah. that uh, sounds like it could be exciting things and uh so if you're definitely looking for something that's perhaps a little bit different yeah you know, as a family activity then jump on down to um broken arrow yeah, yeah. and best way for people to get in touch with you i would say we've got your well, facebook's facebook our biggest page. thing our website's a bit out of action at the moment uh but facebook certainly if you want to shoot a message through we're yep so that's up on your screen there yeah, now so yeah. it's uh broken arrow yeah, archery <laughs> and um yeah jump on board and get yourself down there it's quite affordable as well yeah and yeah. um give it a go i think um i might get the boy down to um have a bit of a oh, for sure. a bit of a yeah. shoot how's and the boy he's 18. i'm oh, 17 sorry 17, 17. yeah i'll well, enjoy it too yeah. so uh i think he will yeah, yeah that's but, a good thing well, i think uh one thing rich my business partner he uh he's got boys that are range from in their 20s down to sort of 10 years old all boys and it was he found that archery was a sport that he they could all compete at on a level playing field yeah that's right you, know, you can't all ride a skateboard or you can't all surf or you can't you know do things that's at all very different true. levels yeah. archery is a very level playing field doesn't matter what age you are how strong you are that's it that's yeah. it I, I didn't think about it that way yeah. so that's there you go guys that's a <laughs> uh something to consider is uh, getting down there get on jump on board the uh, facebook page like it and get in touch with jay and the guys at broken arrow archery and yeah. give it a go look that's um i'm certainly keen to give it a go now <laughs> and uh can't wait to beat you shelby i'm going to beat you mate but uh look we'll see <laughs> we have a lot of people I'll coming in sheep stations. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but look uh thanks for coming in jay and just yeah. sharing a little bit more about archery and you know perhaps uh you know people probably didn't know that it even existed so yeah. um yeah yeah i think it's um it's good for for, for families particularly it to is. get out I and do love something seeing a families different. come in yeah, yeah it's great to see you know, you know parents interacting with their kids instead of them hiding away in a room somewhere <laughs> um and yeah like i said it's on a level playing field or you get a lot of families come in and they'll just challenge to see who gets the most bullseyes out yeah of, you know for the day for the hour oh that's it's awesome great fun yeah excellent well thanks again thank you thanks Jane. happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it guys uh if you've uh, thought about it and you want to do something different then i would definitely get in touch with the guys down there at broken arrow archery in nambour and book in and give it a go like that's uh, sounds like a lot of fun so uh anyway we'll catch you again tomorrow night and tomorrow night i've got paradise seaplanes so something a little bit different again and uh hopefully we'll catch you for that one otherwise have a good weekend and enjoy